Hello, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about Saturn and Cancer in the seventh house. So the seventh house is the house of relationships. It's the house of marriage and partnership. Our first house is our identity. It's our sense of self. It's our path. The seventh, the opposite of that, the reflection of that is when we meet other people. It's what we bring up when we meet other people. It's what we reflect in other people. That is a reflection of our own energy. It is who we attract. It's what we look for. It's how we balance with other people. So having this energy in Cancer, it means that your rising sign is Capricorn. And this is important to note because Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. So your chart ruler is in your seventh house. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about your chart ruler. So Capricorn energy, you're rising in Capricorn. You're someone who presents themselves as put together as possible. You're not someone who can just express themselves in a lackadaisy way. You like to be put together. You like to present yourself the best foot forward. And you work very hard on your life path. You work hard for your ambitions. And that's a part of your identity. And on the flip side, as a reflection of that, your relationships are kind of a comfort zone. When you have your partnership with people, you like something that you can, someone who you can feel at home with. You like where you can express your emotions because you do put your emotions to the side when you go through life. So when you have a partnership, you want to have that emotional side come out. You might even have emotional partners. They might be people who represent someone who kind of needs something, needs nurturing, needs care, or you need care and you need nurturing and they can step in. But as a Capricorn rising, if you're putting too much emphasis on the hard working in your life and not enough emphasis on the caring, that person who is you're manifesting who needs a lot of care, who needs a lot of attention, that's going to kind of wear you out because you're a Capricorn rising. You're someone who works hard all the time. And so you don't have time and energy to also parent your partner. <laughs> you want a partner you can just be comfortable with. And if you comfort them sometimes, that's great. And if they comfort you, that's great. But you want someone who can also be independent as well. And that can show up through your Saturn in this energy. So Saturn energy is that need for lifting yourself up, rising yourself up, rising to the occasion, being on your best best foot, um, holding yourself to higher standards, disciplining yourself and elevating yourself and having goals and ambitions and working towards them. Oftentimes, if we don't engage in this energy actively, if we don't flex these muscles, we have lessons. We might manifest for you, since your Saturn is in the seventh house, this is about rising to the occasion in relationships, having good standards in relationships, showing up in relationships, having good standards and meeting your standards in yourself. Don't put up with stuff and don't have, and they can't put up with stuff. Have high regards and respect for yourself and them. And so having Saturn in the seventh house, if you are someone who hasn't elevated yourself, you haven't stepped up to the table in your relationships, then you're going to manifest relationships that are messy, that are going to remind you that you need to step up. They're not going to be relationships that allow you to just be lackadaisy but you also want to be lackadaisy so the energy here is interesting because you have to be comfortable in a way that's also very structured that's also very disciplined so you can be comfortable but only in a way that is the right kind of comfort so cancer energy you're going to look for the higher vibration of cancer energy here cancer is the little baby it's the inner mother. It's also intuitive wisdom. It's the moon cycles. It's manifestation and fertilization and motherhood and um, moon magic. It's that what can you give birth to energy? So are you playing out the, oh, woe was me, little victim, I'm a baby energy? Or are you honoring your inner child and inner mother and embracing this intuitive strength you have because it does not do you of service to not highlight your strength and you might be someone who has a great career in this area where you might be great at supporting people and at their foundational level and encouraging people to grow up a little bit <laughs> and that's kind of hard thing to do people don't like to grow up a little bit but you're gonna run into people who need to 
unless you find the energy in yourself. And the more you honor your wisdom and your intuition in your relationship, the better it performs, the happier you are, the happier they are. Listen to your intuition. So your intuition and your emotions too. Listen to your emotions. Your emotions might say, I'm hurt, but your intuition says, get up off the ground. So get up off the ground and help yourself, take care of yourself. Or your intuition might say, I need their help. That's okay too. But there's an inner need for responsibility. And this is something you grew up with. You grew up with probably a father who was a bit emotional and wasn't exactly very authoritative. But you have a high sense of need of being authoritative. So you kind of step that up. And you stepped it up in a way that was also caring and nurturing because you had to care for a father. And it might not just be father, but you had to care for that father energy. And so it made you more nurturing when the way you structure, the way you build. It's like a merriment of mother energy and father energy. And you're, you're learning to express that through other people. And how can you nurture how can you love from a mother point of view, a mother perspective? You don't want to love a child just from the mother perspective. You can love the inner child of your partner. Or this can be your child or it can be a client, whatever it is. How can you give encouragement to the inner child? Because we all have an inner child and you will speak to a lot of inner children. You will. How can we give your inner How can you give your inner child and how can you speak to other people's inner child in a way that also rises them up? And this is a, involves a bit of weaning and most children don't like to be weaned. They don't want to. They want to still suckle on the bottle or their mother or whatever it is. They still want that nurturance and that food. They don't want to be weaned. But the when you wean, it's because it's no longer in the mother's benefit or the benefit of the mother and the baby for her to sacrifice for the baby like she does. So you might at points in your life and your relationships help a little bit. But the moments that that stops, the moment that you need to stop helping them is when it no longer serves you to help them, where it's starting to hurt you to help them and it's time for them to help themselves. And that's scary and it's hard. And this is something that you will have to work at for a while. These are going to be themes that are going to span seven year chunks of your lives or even longer. It's going to be something that you have to build on. It's about maturity. It's about rising to the occasion. And you have a natural maturity to you, but it's about taking that farther. Because what does maturity mean? What does ambition mean? It's a moving energy. So you have to keep moving that energy. And it might be that you're moving that energy towards a healthy relationship. It doesn't have to be a business goal. You might want to work with your partner. You might have business goals. You might want to work on a balancing client one-on-one -on -one level, but it doesn't have to be that. You can just have the goal of having a strong, homey relationship with your partner, but that takes work. And so you embrace that. And you were someone who could handle this more than anyone else, Capricorn Risings. And even if you're not Capricorn Rising, you can handle this more than anyone else. It's just a matter of taking that Capricorn energy you apply to yourself and apply it to that relationship. And, and you honestly need it. Like it, it's something you need. You need that to feel secure. You need that to feel good. So take care of you. And doing so, it, it brings good things to your life. It brings good things. And that cancer energy, it's intuitive and it's magical and it gives birth to things. So you can give birth to great things through this work. And you will. And you do. So keep diving in and keep listening to the root energy. If you have a womb, your womb energy. If you don't, that's okay too. You can still tap into the mother womb of Mother Earth. Like, that's fine. Tap into that feminine energy. The moon is the pregnancy, the waxing and waning. Listen to the moon. Track the moon. Listen to the signs the moon are in. What do those signs mean? How can you apply those signs, energy, constructively towards what you're building? How can you use Virgo moon to break things down into an effective to-do list to run a diagnostic test how can you use Aquarius to shift and make epiphanies and move forward how can you use Pisces to dream and you know go to your vision board how can you use these energies for your highest good taking that and doing that is where you win now if you like this and you want to know more you're more than welcome to book a reading with me I would love to work with you I'm going to leave the information down below or if you have other placements in your chart you really want to know about, 
leave those down below as well and I will put them in the drawing too when I pick cards to read again. Um, I want to read, I want to do stuff that uh, definitely, or placements y'all, you guys have. Um, or if you have any other questions, just please let me know and I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.